Bruchim Abayim to another weekly shiur on parasha with the perush of Zera Shimshon. And a special thank you to all the people who have worked hard to make this happen this week and every week, especially the Shkadolian family um, and Tehrani families, Balanes families. This shiur has been dedicated um, for Zchut Avzera Shel Kayama, for Tila Bat Afsane and Yonatan Ben Faride, Devorah Bat Rachel and Benjamin Ben Ruven, Riel Yochai Ben Afsane and Elinor Bat Sara, Eldad Ben Mahnaz, and Bracha Bat Marceldina. It's also been dedicated for the Zchut of finding proper Shiduchim for Sara Bat Pnina, Sara Bat Rosi, Ezra Ben Marceldina, Israel Ben Sara. Orael, Bat Sara, and the Wara Bat Ronit, Navatila. The Shir also has been dedicated for Rufa Shalema of Rachel Simcha Bat Nahid, that should have full recovery. Bezrat Hashem, Amen. I want to especially thank our anonymous sponsor in this chut of his upcoming wedding. Bezrat Hashem should be Zochet to build a Bayit Neman Be Israel. Amen. Okay, we are. Doing Parashat Kitisa, and we're going to study together Ot Dalit, the fourth piece, the fourth essay that Rabbeinu Zera Shimshon, Shimshon Nachmani writes, a beautiful piece on the mitzvah of Shabbat. The Pasuk says in Perek Lamed Aleph, Pasuk Yud Gimel, Speak to the Jews, Lemor, Ach et Shabbatotai, Tishmoru, just, we'll translate it, just keep my Shabbats, Ki ot hi beni ubenechem, because it is a sign between me and you, Ledorotechem, for your generations to come, Ladat ki ani Hashem ekadishchem, to know that I am Hashem that has sanctified you. There are a number of problems with this Pasuk. First of all, why doesn't it say, like everywhere else in the Chumash that says Shabbat? Yom HaShabbat. What's Shabbat Otai? He mentions it in plural form. If you would tell me keep Shabbat, I'll know. We don't say Shomer Shabbatot, we say Shomer Shabbat. So why do you have to say this is, stands out in the entire Chumash? This is the exception that says plural form instead of just saying, you know, keep the day of Shabbat. That's A. B, why do you have to say ach? I mean, just say, Taber b'nei Yisrael emor, et Shabbatotai tishmeru. What's ach et Shabbatotai? Just keep my Shabbat. Yishalmi says in Masechet Berachot that achin verakin, whenever is ach or rak in the Chumash is lashon miut, is coming to exclude something, is going to narrow focus something um, in, 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 in a very specific way. So why do you have to have ach et shabetotai tishmoru? Fine. So says the Zerah Shimshon, Kashe, lama katav shabetotai bilshon rabim? Why is it plural form? And doesn't say et ha-shabbat, which we find everywhere else in the Torah, kemo shumatzidu bechol ha-Torah. And also, milat ach, ma ba lemaet? What is he coming to exclude? As we mentioned, um, this is a question that's already mentioned in Rashi. If take a look at Rashi if you want. Rabbeinu Bechai asks the same question, other Rishonim as well. But again, our focus is just the core of the question um, based on, again, the Yerushalmi that we mentioned in Masechet Brachot, Perek Tet, Halacha Zayin, I believe it is, that Achin Verakin, whenever you have Ach, is coming to narrow and, and exclude, not to make it wider and include. So says the Zerah Shimshon, we have more coming. The Gemara says in Masechet Shavuot, 
And the Afkhaf Amud Bet. The Gemara says, Zachor veshamor bedibur echad neemru. That when HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the Aseret at Dibrot, he said, Zachor at Yom HaShabbat, and also Shamor at Yom HaShabbat in one shot. Ma she'en ha'pe yachol ledaber, says the Gemara, ve'en ha'ozen yachol ha'lishmoa. Something that physically speaking, a mouth cannot speak and an ear cannot hear because you either say Zachor or you say Shamor. You can't say Zachor and Shamor together. But that's how it was. Now, how do we know this? The source of this is from a very plain, simple Pashut um, observation of the Aseret Adibrot. Now, which one does it say? Does it say Zachor or does it say Shamor in the Chumash when the Aseret Adibrot is written? Well, it depends where you're looking. If you take a look, Aseret Adibrot are mentioned twice in the Chumash. This is actually a very good homework to take a look at all the differences that there are, and there are many. You could easily find, quickly, ten differences between the first and the second one. Now, in the mitzvah of Shabbat alone, there, there are two of them that's going to say here, maybe I'll add one more, that by the first one, it says, Zachor et Yom HaShabbat Lekadisho, and in Parashat Yitro, and Parashat Vayet Haran in Dvarim, when he recounts the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim and the story of Matan Torah, there it says, Shamor et Yom HaShabbat Lekadisho. Hence, Chazal say, well, both of them were said simultaneously by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we heard both. It was a miraculous um, event that, that we, you know, it's just for kol ha'am, ro'im et ha'kolot ve'et ha'lapidim. People also saw this spoken. It was not just, it was visual as well. You didn't just hear, you saw it, 3D vision, you know, visual as well. So a lot of miracles happened throughout the, the giving of the Torah, one of them was that you heard things that a regular ear cannot hear. One of which was Zachor and Shamor. That's the Gemara in Shavuot Dav Chaf. So it says, Zer HaShimshon. Ve'lama davka bedibrot ha'rishonot k'tiv Zachor? So why do you have Zachor in the first ones, bedavka and Shamor in the second one? He doesn't explain anything why. Uh, I, when I read this, I was like, well, we're Jews. If you would write it the other way around, you would ask also, why did you do it that way? But really, I think the deeper understanding is because the Pasuk says in Tehilim, someone could help me over here? What was the source for this? Sur, Mera, Vasetov. You first have to get, take, get away from doing negative, and then you do good, right? When you want to focus on something, you first have to stop the negativity, and then you could create positive. So if you want to say shamor and zachor, zachor is remembering to do good. Shamor means, whenever it says, hishamer lecha pen, hishamer lecha al, it's, it's coming to tell you one of the negative laws of the Torah, one of the don't do's of the Torah. So shamor represents the don't do's of Shabbat. Don't do chilul Shabbat. Sham, zachor is coming to tell you, do the Shabbat properly, right? Make sure you have the proper kishka and the proper, proper, um, you know, on Shabbat and do the things that a person should be doing on Shabbat. So which one is more important? Shamor. So why don't you say Shamor first? It says Zachor in the first one and Shamor only in the second one. So it says Zera Shimshon. Another question. You ready for this? This is a big one. In the mitzvah of Shabbat, in Aseret Brot, it tells you why you're keeping Shabbat. But it says different reasons in the first one and the second one. Do you know that? In the first um, Dibrot, in Parashat Yitro, it says, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ki sheshed yamim asa Hashem et ha-shamayim ve Hashem in six days created the world, And therefore, and it stopped on, on, on the seventh day. So you're basically doing it, remembering that Kadosh Baruch Hu created the world 
in six days, and seventh day was off. Now you're taking off. Very good. By Pashat Vatchanan, that's not what it says. You know what it says? Zecher Lisiat Misraim. And that's why we in Kiddush we say Zecher Lisiat Misraim. Right? Both at night and in the morning. By Kiddush we say Zecher Lisiat Misraim. You have to understand how Shabbat is Zecher Lisiat Misraim. That by itself is very questionable. Right? <laughs> Has it ever occurred to you as you say in Kiddush, you say, wait a second, what Zecher Lisiat Misraim is over here? But that's what it says in the second account of, of Luchot, of, of uh, the Aserta of Tiprod in Parashat Vayat Hanan. He basically says, you should remember, Vezacharta ki Eved Haita Beres. Misraim remembered that you were slaves, servants in Mitzrayim. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ve'yotziach HaShem Elokecha. Biyat Chazaka Ubizroa Netuya HaShem took you out with stretched arm and, and strong hand. And therefore, uh, Hashem commanded you to keep the Shabbat. Because Hashem took you out of Mitzrayim, He commanded you to keep Shabbat. Which is beautifully strange. Right? The first one I understand. Hashem created the world. Six days, seventh day, and you remember the creation of the world every time that you stop working on Shabbat. But this one needs a little bit more explanation. So now he starts answering. Now, Chazal explained that when the first Luchot were given, when we heard Aseret brought in real time, and we got the first Luchot, and we spoke about this twice already in the previous parashiot, it's a Gemara in Ketuvot, Kufyud Aleph, the Gemara there says, Harut ala Luchot, it was engraved, Al Tigre Harut ela Herut, because it's, way, it's written exactly the same way. That it, they were freed from all the bondage of the physical world. They became spiritual beings. Like Moshe Rabbeinu, we, we relate to him when he came down from the mountain. Literally, his neshama was shining through his gov. Kikaran or pene Moshe. The or with an ayin turned into an or with an aleph. He became, uh, the spiritual element of his neshama became the dominant factor in his, in his body. All the Jews became like that. And therefore, they were not supposed to have any shibud malchut. The Gemara says this in Avodah Zarah in the beginning. The hey, Gemara says they were not supposed to have shibud malchuyot. Not supposed to have any galuts, any difficulty. It was amazing, right? And on them, the David Amelech says in Tehilim, in capital Pebet, it says, Amarti Elohim atem, uvne elion kulechem. I said, Hashem is talking. I said, you became like Malachim, bene elion kulechem. You no longer are going to die. They, they were not supposed to, to even die afterwards. It was completely spiritual being. But then, they did Egel Azahav, which is, again, the climactical negative point of this parasha of Kitisa, the, the infamous Egel Azahav story. And it says, Achen ke'adam temutun. Unfortunately, you're going to die like Adam Arishon, ke'adam. Like Adam Arishon who sinned with Etzadat and he was, you know, destined to now die. You also made the same mistake. So it says, came back after Egel Azahav. And the Mefarshim explained that if they would stay in Mitzrayim, this whole thing would not be needed. Now, the, this is a problem by itself which needs a lot of explanation because it says, Moshav Israel Asher Yashu Beres Mitzrayim. How long did the Jews stay in Mitzrayim? Can somebody help me? 2.10. Well, it's 2.10, but really in Pasuk says 4.30. So now Rashi has to explain it. It doesn't fit. Does it not fit? But Bnei Israel did not stay 4.30. That's for sure. And all the answers that the Rishonim give, you read them, sometimes it raises an eyebrow. It's difficult. So the Farshim say, really they were supposed to stay how much? 4.30. But 1.90, okay, that really depends on 400, 4.30.
because Avraham Avinu, the Gezera was 400. Yadua Teda ki giri yezar acha be'eres olahem ve'avadum ve'inu otam arba me'ot shana. The declaration of exile to Avraham Avinu was, you should know that your children are going to be in Galut 400 years. Rashi Rai Devei makes a cheshbon that from birth day of Yitzchak until Yitzchak Mitzrayim was 400 years. Fine. But what do you do with the 430? Right? You're with me. So you have three different things to, to match with each other, and the 40 is the biggest problem. So Sayyid the Mefarshim brings Zer Hashim Shon that really they should have stayed 430. And had they stayed 430, 430 years, that would be the end of the Gezerah of Galut on Jews forever. You would never have the destruction of Betamit Tash, never go to the Babylonian Galut, to the Madayu Parast. Galut to the, the Greeks and the, the, the Edom, none of that will happen. But now that they went early, and why did they go early? Because they, st they stooped down so much that in, in the language of Ari Kadosh, there are 50 levels of, tum of, of negativity in the world, and they were in the 49th and a half. If they would have stayed one more day, they would have entered the lowest level of Tum'ah from which you cannot emerge without Torah, without the Kedusha of Torah, and they didn't have Torah. So hence, Hashem had to take them out early. That's why the Shibud became much harder. Hashem gave them a harder, um, you know, slavery in order to get them out quicker, but at the end of the day, they didn't finish the 430 years over there. And therefore it says, if they would have stayed for 430, as it was decreed upon them that they should. Again, because it, it says, The Pasuk says that it was 430. Let's go. Says the Zerah Shimshon, Therefore, if they would have gone out, no one could have touched the Jews ever again, taking them to exile. But because they had to quickly get out, not to enter the 50th level of Tum'ah, therefore, Nigzara lehem galuyot acherot. The Gezra had to contain now multiple layers of of galut, of exile, coming upon them afterwards. Just like we have spoken about this elsewhere, he, he has at least two other pieces in the previous parashiot that he has, he has written on this. Therefore, he explains. Now, back to our questions. In the first dibrot, which, which is before they did Egel Azahav, so what level are they on? Malachim. They are mamash high on top of the world. And says the Zerah Shimshon, Shayu Yisrael kemo Elohim. They were like Malachim. They were tremendous. Kedichtiv, ani amarti, just like the Pasuk that we mentioned in Tehilim, Pebet, that says, ani amarti Elohim atem, uvnei Elyon kulechem, achem kadam temut. Back then they were high on top of the world. Mishum hachi shayach ikar Shabbat v'shmirat v'zachor. Therefore, you don't have to, Yetzirah is not there even. You have to say, Shamor et Yom HaShabbat, be careful not to do Averot. You know what's going to have Averot? The Ikar of Shabbat for them was Zachor, the Kaddishot, to do positive. To stay away from negativity was not that much of a challenge altogether, because the Yitzhara was outside their body, so to speak. So you, you, you had already the protection of negativity, you just had to do more positive. So which one do you write? Of course, Zachor et Yom HaShabbat, the Kaddishot. I like create more sanctity, more kedusha, which is the mitzvah of zachor, the positive side of the mitzvah of Shabbat. She zachor zu mitzvah aseh v'shamor lo taaseh. Zachor is a do, is a positive mitzvah, and shamor is a don't do a negative mitzvah, as we mentioned before. Right? This is again the 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 Gemara in uh, Rosh Hashanah discusses this at length. Um, in Davchav Zayin Amud Aleph, that you know, when you have the, 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 these leshonot, the, the division between them is as so, as such. So says the Zerah Shimshon. 
ועשה דה שבת, מצוות עשה דה, the positive side of מצוות שבת is, לקדש שוב, מאכל ומשתה, ובדברי תורה, the positive side of מצוות שבת is, to make sure that you have a cohesive family, you give over the Jewish values, so to speak, right? And, and, and that is, the Isul Melacha is because HaKadosh Baruch Hu stopped working, but it's also there because you want to focus on, this is the, the, the Sefer Chinuch writes this, in Isur Melacha al Yom Tov, he says, I understand why on Shabbat you can't work. You can't drive, you can't, because Hashem stopped, you have to stop over Yom Tov, it's not the seventh day of creation, and says the Chinuch, this Isur Melacha al Yom Tov because Hashem wants you to stop and focus your attention on the nisim v'niflaot that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has done for you, getting the family together and being able to transmit those, those values to your children. Right? That's a tremendous thing. Yerushalmi says that's the whole thing of, of uh, not working on chol moed. Because Hashem wants you to, to learn Torah and, and speak to your wife and to your children and give them over the values of, of Yiddishkeit. Of Judaism. And so if you don't do that, you, you defeat the whole purpose of, of Chola Moed. So here it says, that's why you, you focus on, on learning Torah. There is um, a Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer and Tana de Ber Yahu Rabbah. Tana de Ber Yahu Rabbah, in the beginning, Perek Aleph, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu told, told the Jews that I'm giving you the Torah. And it says in Sefer Yoshua, Vagita Bo Yomam Valayla, but you can't do that because you're working during the week. So on Shabbat, I want you to learn the whole time. I want you to learn it in Shabbatot, Vyamim Tovim. It doesn't say Lechol Cholent, it says, um, <laughs> <laughs> it says, Lasuk Bayam Bedivre Torah, you want to learn, right? You want to, to focus on, on the values of the Torah. The, the, the positive side of Mitzvah Shabbat is important. But then it says, "V'kodem shchatu lo'aylahem od yetzer hara." And therefore, "V'hayu kemo elokim afilu bechol lo'ayu osim melacha." Even during the week, they didn't have as much need for work. I mean, of course, the manna was was coming and so on, but had they not sinned, it would be ongoing nisim. There's a Gemara in Masechet Brachot. The Gemara there, it's really discussing a machloket between Rabbi Ishmael and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yuchai of working, not working, the person is shoot. And there's a pasuk that says, Ve'amdu zarim ve'ra'u sonichem. That others would do your work if HaKadosh Baruch Hu is pleased with Am Yisrael, with you. It says, if they would not have sinned, they were in such high lofty madrega that they, didn't, they wouldn't even need to do the, the, you know, the, the chores of a physical life. Therefore it says Zachor by the first they brought, because that was what they needed to hear, not Shamor. They didn't have to stay away from negativity. There was no negativity to be had, so to speak. But then he says they brought ראשונות שלא היה להם עוד גלות אחרות, טעם השבת היה מפני בריאת עולם. Therefore, same thing applies, that in, in the first דיברות, it says you should keep Shabbat because of the creation of the world. Because the reason of Shabbat, keeping Shabbat was, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world in six days, in the seventh day he, he stopped, and you want to commemorate that every single week by being me'id al ma'aseh bereshit. Not, nothing to do with Yitziat Misraim, but the second Luchot, the second time around, which is after the Chet Egel of the sin of the golden calf, says the Zerashim Shon is a whole different story. Because now that they came out of Mitzrayim earlier on, and they don't have the Tikkun of Naseh Venishma, in other words, they came early from from, from Mitzrayim, not 4.30, but they came at 2.10, and therefore they have to go to other exiles. But they had the opportunity of fixing that when they had the first Luchot and they said, Naseh Nishma. but now that they did Chet HaEgel, they lost that. So now you're back to the fact that you have to go to other additional exiles, right? You're following? 
So now that you have to go to additional exiles, because you came out of Mitzrayim early, says the Pasuk, I want you to keep the Shabbat because, remember, Yatsata Meres Mitzrayim. You came from Eres Mitzrayim, and that Gezera of Galut is still upon you unless you have the Zchut of Shabbat, which is. Which is the Gemara in, in Masechet Shabbat. The Gemara in Masechet Shabbat says that Ilmale Shavru Israel Shabbat Echad. If they would keep that first Shabbat after Matan Torah, they would not sin Cheta Egel. They would get to Shabbat. That's it. That would be the end of Geula. We would never have any Galut, nothing. But we sinned. But it doesn't end there. The Gemara there says in Kufyut Cheta Bud Beit. But I says, if the Jews keep two Shabbats, two Shabbats, Ilmale Shamru Israel Shte Shabbatot Miyat Hayu Nigalin, they will be immediately redeemed. And what's the connection? The connection is because when a person keeps Shabbat, and he doesn't, he doesn't focus on this, this Hashem shown over here, but the Gemara in Brachot does. The Gemara in Brachot, the Nun Zayin Amud Bet, the Gemara says, Shabbat is echad mishishim le'olam haba. Shabbat is like a piece of olam haba. It's a higher plane of existence. So a person that keeps Shabbat properly, you're pushing the existence to that level of perfection that the world had before we sinned. So therefore, this chut of Shabbat, and the Gemara there in, in Shabbat, Masachat Shabbat, Kuf Yud Chet, says that when you keep Shabbat, you are saved from shibud malchuyot. That you, you don't need necessarily to go through galut. It saves you from having to be you know, subjugated to service of other goyim. So you see, this is the same chut that you had in the beginning before we lost it. And therefore, now that we sinned by Cheta Egel, and we are in the new reality of the world, what takes us out of Galut? Something that's me'el olam haba, and stops the Galut, stops Shibut Malchuyot, is the Zechut of Shabbat. Therefore, now you understand why by second time that the Torah recounts the Aseret Tibrot, it says, keep Shabbat, you know why? Because remember, it came out of Mitzrayim, and it was not completed, you have to go to Galut. That's why I'm telling you, I'm commanding you to, to keep Shabbat. And that's probably the, the third difference that I'm going to mention right now. If you take a look, in the second um, account of, of Matan Torah, it says, Therefore, Sivecha Hashem Elokecha Hashem commanded you to keep Shabbat. And the first one doesn't have that. That's another difference. And according to what we're saying, is perfect. Because Hashem is commanding you to take yourself out of, out of galut like this. It's not just that, well, you have the opportunity of Shabbat, build more. There's no negativity, just build more. But I'm telling you, just because you came out of Mitzrayim, therefore HaKadosh Baruch Hu is commanding you to take yourself out. And this is, he, he does mention this in, um, in a hint, even though that he doesn't say it. V'siyem ha-katuv al ken tzivecha Hashem elokecha la'asod et yom ha-Shabbat. Hashem commands you in order to redeem your soul from the um, subjugation of Shibut Malchut of the Galut. So that's something extraordinary and very powerful. And I want to just end with one, one more piece. Whereas the Gemara says in Masechet Shabbat on page 118b that if the Jews would keep two Shabbats there would be miyatnik alin, right away they would be saved. The Yerushalmi says, the Bavli says, Ilmale shamru Israel shne shabbatot ke ilchatan, I'm just calling you the exact language, miyat hayu nikalin. If they would keep two Shabbats like halacha, they would right away be saved. And Yerushalmi says, Ilmale shamru Israel afilu shabbat achat ke tikna miyat hayu nikalin. One Shabbat, ke tikna. So which one is it? One, two? I heard once an insight that there's a difference between Shabbat, Shemirat Shabbat Kehilchata, and Shemirat Shabbat Ketikna. 
Sometimes you're doing Shabbat ki il khata. It's like, what's Allah? What's mutar? What's asur? And that's it. It's like a machine. I'm doing whatever I need to do, nothing more, nothing less. But then you have somebody that really enjoys Shabbat. He's not looking to see what's mutar to do. What's a, he, it's much more than that. He's connecting with Shabbat. He's connecting with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. His Shabbat is not a bunch of do's and don'ts. But it's an opportunity to connect. It's not just to stay away from It's Gishmak. Whether the Seuda, whether the Zmirot, the singing, whether the family, the kids, the wife, the husband. It's an elevated a state of living. That's very different than a Shomer Shabbos person. Than a person that just keeps Shabbat, you know, checks all the boxes. Okay, the Mukta, this, Borer. Much more than that. It's a person that connects to HaKadosh Baruch Hu through Shabbat, through the Zmirot, through the, you know, the family connection, enjoys it. That's Ketikna, language of Yerushalmi, not Keil Chata. It's not just like Halakha, but it's much more than that. It's Ketikna, it's as, the, the way it should be. That, even one Shabbat suffices. The Zchut of Shabbat is what, what has kept us in Galut, is what takes us out of Galut. And something to connect with, you know. And perhaps us, and the more from, from birth you are, the harder it is. Because we go through it, you know, Shabbat again, uh, you know, we know, we know the drill, we know the drill, right? Yom HaShishi, and before you know it, Shabbat is up, Baruch Hashem, look at Rabbi Rutam, Rabbi Rutam, even those who keep Rabbi Rutam, ah, Baruch Hashem. Versus a person that can't say goodbye to Shabbat. It's very different, it's a different state of living. When a person connects with HaKadosh Baruch Hu through Shabbat, that's something that needs a lot of chizuk in our community, in our lives. Myself, I'm talking out loud to myself. Something that needs so much chizuk, so much um, you know, focus in a busy life that we have, that we just go through things and check boxes and complete tasks. Shabbat is not a task to complete. It's an opportunity of me'en olam haba. It's one-sixtieth of olam haba, the Gemara says. And that's something so powerful. You see it in the Pesukim. It becomes much more meaningful when you read it with all of the beautiful details that he brings up. But the point of it is pretty simple and pretty po profound. Live with Shabbat. Live it, not just keep it. And, and that would be as Chut Bezal Get out of this Galut once and for all. Amen. Amen.